I have a godmother who lives in Austria, and um, well, I think it's about I think it's about ten years ago now. I was there, and she she took me on a trip to a very interesting museum in Watten. I'm not sure whether it is still there, um, but it is called Swarovski Kristallwelten. And if you see this guy there, uh, there, right there, that's exactly what you see on the outside. It really has it. It's an amazing thing. It's it's clearly devoted to Swarovski, um, and the art there is is what well, I I don't know how to put that. It's 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 very weird stuff. It's very dark in the inside. A lot of light. A lot of crystal. Uh, a a lot of uh, Swarovski crystal light. You know that. Um, so very fascinating thing. So if you ever get to that part of Austria, uh, the Tyrol area, then then check that out because it's 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 quite wonderful. Also, she gave me a Swarovski owl. You see the owl? It's an owl. Is it an owl? Yes, it's an owl. Um, and uh, that's that's a particularly nice memento that symbolizes wisdom in many cultures. Uh, and I I don't have a huge collection of Swarovski crystals. This is the only one. But I like it. it. has a cherished position in my bookshelf there. And um, fountain pens can be like that too. They can give you a nice memory of, of a specific event you, you've attended or, or something like that. And I thought that to memorize that, that particularly nice trip uh, she took me on, we would have a look at crystal pens, and I have two. They're not actually made of crystal. They're just called crystal. Monteverde, Artista Crystal and Pilot Crystal. And I think it's time we compare these two in a crystal fountain pen shootout. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So, Artista Crystal, Pilot Crystal, which one is best? Um, just a short summary, I think it's always the most informative thing in this video is to just show you the writing sample. So after I just briefly talk you through, I'm going to take them apart, show you how to do that, and then do writing sample, and that's all let's do it. I think that's the most informative part. So just a very brief rundown. I have separate reviews of these two pens on my channel, so for a more in-depth view, go there. To compare them, as you can see, the, uh, the Pilot Crystal is just a little bit taller when capped, uh, when uncapped, I think the difference isn't that great. No, again, the pilot is a little bit bigger, but as you can see, it's a fairly minor difference. The two pens have uh, clear caps, no inner caps that disrupt the view of the nib. So if you like this type of demonstrated stuff where you can see everything on the inside, these are the pens for you. As far as I know, the, Ar the Artista Crystal the Monteverde pen comes in a bunch of colored finishes. Uh, and this crystal I've only seen as a completely clear demonstrator. Uh, the pilot has some gold highlights. Some people like that. Some people don't. On the uh, Artista crystal, they are chrome. I think personally, I think that goes better with this sort of tacky. Uh, no, not. I mean, I don't mean tacky. I mean tech-like, like technology, like with cog wheels and design. Hello, designers. That kind of stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, so we have that. I think this is a particularly nice pen, Monteverde Artista Crystal. Uh, very pleasant to use, very sweet nib. I, I love that. Uh, this nib is scratchier on the Pilot. It's also more flexy, so it depends a little bit on what you're looking for, I suppose. Um, Weight-wise, I think I've got my scale here. I think there's almost no difference. So the... Um, uh, Artista comes out to about 30 grams. Okay, and the, the pilot to about 20 grams. It's it, uh, 10 grams is actually not that bad, but um, two demonstrators. Both cold crystal. Both are pleasant to use. I think you just need to see them in action. I'm going to take them apart and then show you how they write. And that's all there's to it. So I hope that's going to be useful. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye. All right, all right, all right. What have we got here, then? Well, this is a Pilot Crystal. This is the Monteverde Artista Cristal. 
I would like to say crystal, I don't know why, it's probably just crystal too. Um, and uh, the funny thing about these two pens is that you can disassemble them completely. So let's start with that Pilot Crystal. Um, the cap just slides off. Uh, I believe if you want to, you can unscrew... Yeah, there we go. So you can unscrew this part of the cap, take out the inner cap, take off the clip, take off the little metal ring, and now it's going to be difficult because is there a little thing say it's better out for the clip? Yes, there is right there on the cap, and that's all easy. Hard is to get this back in because as you can see there is no way to grab any purchase to grab it, so I'm gonna slide that in, see if that works. There we go. Um, we need to put that in there. Take some pressure. What's really useful for this stuff is a pencil with an eraser. I don't have one at hand, so I make do with a desk pen, which also works. And the cap is back in order. Yes, good fit. You have to check this out off camera. Looks good to me. <clears throat> Now we have the barrel, screws off. Carefully don't lose these metal rings, they keep popping off on this pen, I don't know why. Um, then here, this end of the barrel, you can unscrew this sort of blind cap thing, it doesn't really have, have a purpose. And yet another gold ring comes off, so be very careful when you do that. Then we have uh, the converter, that's just an aerometric converter with a little rubber sack in there. Um, so. Be careful, <clears throat> you don't really want to disassemble this, just leave it as it is. <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> I need a, tip, a sip of tea there. Right, <clears throat> has a wide opening, you can just hold this under a tap if you really want to clean it, then roll up a tissue, stick it in there, and then you should be completely set. Uh, the section, nib and feet are friction fit, put them on your fingers, put your thumb on there, pull it off straightly very interesting clear section this looks like that stuff that's glow in the dark you know that that's what it's it reminds me of um, we have the little nib it's just a normal sized nib um, got number five I think so maybe you can swap it out with other nibs I have not tried that the section is completely round doesn't really matter what you do you can you don't have to align anything just slide that back in there take your cartridge, put it back on. I'm not going to screw this in place yet because uh, I have to ink it up in a second. Here we have the Monteverde Artista Crystal. Unscrew the uh, uh, cap. Uh, this one doesn't have a slip cap but a screw-on cap, so if you like that, that could be a decisive factor to buy this pen. Unscrew the barrel. Um, put that away. Now we have the converter. Beauty about these converters is that they can be disassembled, so you hold the ink reservoir and you hold this little metal ring, and you can just unscrew the metal ring. Off comes the piston turning knob, out comes the entire piston with a little plastic guiding ring, which you can also slide off. You can then clean out this very easily again, roll up a paper tissue, throw that in there, and then it's dry. Um, this is a very weird, it's plastic, it doesn't really feel like rubber or something, so that's, that's interesting. Texture, put a little bit of silicon grease on there, that's good to, to lubricate it. Um, then you have these little protrusions there, let me zoom in a bit because it's very hard to see. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can fully see it, but there are protrusions right there. There's one, then nothing there, and here's another one. That metal, oh sorry, that, that plastic little ring just slides in there, you see that? So if it's like this, it's it's not good, and then it slides in and then it's fine. Let me zoom out a bit. There we go. Then you put that turning knob back on there. You can see you can just operate the piston as it is. And you take your metal ring, slide it on there. Screw it back in place. Don't over tighten anything. And if you really want to, I suppose you can put a little bit of silicon grease right there on those threads to give an extra good seal, but I don't really think that's necessary. 
This section can be disassembled. The nib and feet, strictly speaking, are friction fit, but they are in a nib color which you can take out entirely. Uh, what you do, what I find the easiest thing to do, is just sort of grab the section like this so that the nib is snuggled in your finger. Put your thumb there and then unscrew this bit. And that is something we have not seen before a whole lot. That's why I wanted to show you that. Uh, it's a little bit of, of metal. And this, you see those threads? That's where the nib collar screws into place. So if you sort of push at the end there, I say sort of because you, you cannot really, my fingers are too big to get in there, but there's a little, there's a little bit of the feet that sticks out. Be careful, you don't want to break that or anything. Just push and then that nib collar pops out. I'm not sure whether you saw that, I'll do it again. Um, see, it sort, of, it sort of pops out. Now you can just pull it out. You have the nib collar, feed and nib. You can hold the nib on your finger, put your thumb on the feed, and then slide off the nib collar in a straight fashion. Do not twist, because that can break uh, your feed. A nice clear feed, if it gets a little dirty from use, uh, just take about 10% of bleach, just regular common house bleach, and 90% uh, water, and just throw this in there for a while, and it will uh, um, become completely clear again. Uh, and you can, you can then just, you have to flush it well with water, but then you should be good to go. It's another a simple nib. Uh, once you're ready to put it back together again, Align the nib, roughly shoulders of the feet to shoulders of the nib. Don't put this down too far, don't put it too far to the back. You just have to experiment a little bit with that. But I think the nib collar is going to allow you to slide things in place. Now as to that nib collar, well, I have to talk about that because you can make a mistake in assembling this. And then the pen may not, and then you may actually break something. What you see there, let me just grab a little probe there. You see this end? That's flat whereas this end is round. It's very subtle, but there's a sort of a thicker part that's flat. If I turn it around, maybe you'll see it a bit better. You see that? That's flat, and this is round. The round part is where the nib goes, and the flat part, that is where the feed goes. So, grab your nib and feed, align them, roughly, shoulders of the nib equals shoulders of the feed. You hold them tightly, you make sure you got it correctly, because I once did this wrongly and then I snapped my feet in half. And it was a clean um, fracture, so to speak, so I could just put some glue on there and it works again, but it was not too pretty, so don't do that. Make sure you got the flat end at the bottom of the feet and then it should slide in very easily. If you feel a lot of resistance, it's probably not aligned well. And just slide it in all the way, slide the feet in all the way, slide the nib in all the way, check whether they are aligned properly. This looks pretty good to me, but you can always gently rotate the nib a little bit, very gently, don't break anything. And then you're set to go. So that's how to disassemble this pen. Once you are ready, you take your... I'm just gonna take an ink cloth because of greasy fingers, you know. There we go. Um, when you're ready, you put that back into the feed. Doesn't matter how, or sorry, into the section. Doesn't matter how you do that. It's completely round. There's, there's no up or down to that. And then you stick this in. What I always like to do is I just like to stick this in. Now, what happens then is that you push out the nib collar again. You see that? Um, so what I like to do is I just I just slide that in. Then I hold the nib and feet like this so that they don't get disaligned. And then I gently screw that part. And in principle, that should be all that you're doing. And then this should be tight again, and you're done. And you slide in the converter, and you can ink up the pen. Today I'm going to be using this. This is a Delta ink bottle, but it is Parker Quink in there. Don't expect anything too fancy. Start with that Pilot uh, Crystal. It's an aerometric filled pen, so you just squeeze that bar, then let it go. Squeeze it again, let it go. Usually I do three or four of those compressions. For now I'll just do three, that should be enough to write with. Wipe off the section. What is really cool about these clear sections is that you can, let me zoom in there, that you can see the ink. You see that? That's the top bit of the nib, 
then you have the ink that has saturated the feed. This was clear, remember? I said that was like one of those glow-in-the-dark things. Now it's turned blue because of that ink. I think it's super cool. That kind of stuff is really nice. Okay, screw this back in place. Zoom out a bit. Now we need to ink up the Artista Crystal, which has a fairly standard screw-type converter. And I'm not dipping the ink deeply enough below the ink level. There we go. You can definitely get more ink in there, but I, for now, I mean, I just have to do writing samples, so I don't need gallons of ink. Just wiping off the pen there. I'm going to grab some paper, and then we'll do a writing sample. Okay. Here we go with first... Oh yeah, and by the way, you see that in the cap? Another metal ring that comes off. It's amazing. All right. Pilot. Crystal. Listen to the noise. I call it the noisy grasshopper. It's a joke. Like noisy cricket, but grasshopper. Well, never mind. Uh, here we have the Monteverde. Artista. Crystal in medium. It just barely fits. We have the quick brown dog. No, fox. No dog. No fox. No dog. No fox. Jumps over the lazy fox. No, dog. No, fox. No, no dog. Oh, look, it's dog. There we go. Then we have the pilot. Japanese fine. That is Western really, really frickin' fine. Is it scratchy? Well... It gives a lot of feedback. Um, this is smooth rhodia paper. But, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely on the scratchy side. The more I use it, the more I feel that way. Now, it is super fine. It is likely to give you feedback. There isn't that much tipping material on the nib, so that's just what happens. Uh, I suppose I could try smoothing it out a bit. Maybe that'll help, but with such a fine nib, I, I, I think it may be a lost cause. Okay, fast writing. Now, up to this point, the Artista is the more pleasant pen. It's a bit smaller. It's, uh, just want to show you that. It's a bit smaller. Not even that much. Just a bit. It's a bit thicker. It has a metal section. Some people like that. Some people don't. Um, I think this is a somewhat more classical looking design um, with, with the gold bits, etc. Um, but, okay. So, what about wetness? Well, a really fine nib. But look, for such a fine nib, it's not bad. But if you look the way it writes now, I'm not even sure whether you can see that. We're talking about, oh, you know what? I can show you. If only I had my loop. Here we go. See that thing sticking out? Paper fiber. It's sticking out from the end of the nib. And uh, this thing collects paper fiber like there is no tomorrow. It's, it's really, um, well, crazy. Uh, so maybe that's another reason to, to smooth it out a bit. That's why it was fairly wet. I've just wiped it off. But even then, I have to say, for such a fine nib, it's definitely on the wet side. Now, this is Rhodia, so it's smooth paper. The Artista Crystal 
much smoother writing experience um, and also very wet. So at this point you may say okay the Artista offers way more advantages than the, um, uh, the, the, the Pilot Crystal does why would I even buy the Crystal? Well let's just say we're gonna have a look at nib flexibility here. Um, this is no pressure and I'm going to apply more pressure and that's really this is really as far as I'm willing to take it uh, and you get some line variation but you really have to push down hard on that nib and not everyone is willing to do that for obvious reasons because you don't want to bend that is spring anything now we're going to do the same thing here aha and then we had a well at least semi flex nib which is a very interesting experience and relatively speaking I think the line variation you get here is much greater than the line variation you get there I could be wrong of course but it's much easier to get the line variation from the pilot crystal now the final thing I'll do just because some people like it is right reverse so nib upside down it's pretty smooth in the pilot crystal in the Artista, it's scratchy. I can feel it and I can actually feel that pick up some paper fiber now, so it's not the way it was meant to be used. And you know what? There you have it. So which pen is best? Well, if it's flexibility you're looking for, some nice line variation and maybe some really thin hairlines, then this Pilot Crystal is the pen for you. If you're looking for an everyday writer, you can easily carry with you that's not too big, uh, that can be posted if you want to, you know, then it, it's a bit bigger, I mean it's not a, a, a pocket pen or anything, even unposted it's, it's a, a decent size to use. Um, for a very smooth writing experience then I would say that the Artista is the way to go for you, and apart from that it is entirely up to you based on looks, etc. So I hope this was useful, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.